Hello and welcome to America's Heartland. I'm Paul Ryan. There's something about the harvest season that seems to resonate deep within us. For many in the heartland, it's the culmination of many months of planning, hard work, and hope. We found a good example in the cornfields of Tennessee. That's where last spring, we joined a farmer as he planted his fields with seeds and a sense of optimism. We now return to his farm to see if the soil has kept its timeless promise. As William Hendley climbs into his combine for the annual harvest, he'd like to be thinking positively. He'd like to think all of his hard work will pay off. But when you make your living off the land, you best deal only in reality. This year's harvest is probably the poorest harvest that I've ever had since I've been farming. Um, you do have a lot of hopes when, it, when you start planting, you know, that, that this year's crop will be as good as it was last year, or maybe better. And uh, just the rainfall that we had this year wasn't, wasn't good enough to make a good crop. An acre of Williams, Tennessee farmland usually produces around 150 bushels of corn. This year, he's lucky to get 100 bushels. Some acres are so bad, these huge combines will only get about 40 bushels. Once the combines have cleared out and the rows of corn are gone, you can really see the problem Williams facing this year. This soil is dry. It's one of the worst droughts they've faced here in years. You just can't make corn without water. You can't hardly make anything without water. So it doesn't matter how good a care that you put into it. If you don't get the range you need, you won't have a very good harvest. But you hate to work all year, you know, 60, 70 hours a week and not have anything to show for it. It's not just the work. William invests lots of money in these crops each year, in seed, fertilizer, chemicals, and pay for his farm workers. Crop insurance will help cover some losses, and federal disaster loans will be available but William is concerned about the long-term impact. Here's an analogy for you. Say you get a job, and the boss tells you he's gonna pay you $50,000 a year. The third year of your job, he comes in, he says, you know, so we're not gonna be able to pay you for working this year, and you owe us the $100,000 back that you've made the last two years. That's what we're looking at in this corn crop this year. It's not only going to lose what equity we would have made this year, but we're losing what equity we've made over the past two years. Last spring, William was hopeful for a good growing season, but even as he planted his crop, his optimism was tempered by important lessons from the past. Farming's one thing if you don't love, I don't think there's a whole lot of use of being out there because of, you put in a lot of long hours. And during this disappointing harvest, William will put a lot of hours in the cab of his combine. The huge mechanism on front is called the header. It pulls the ears of corn off the stock and sends that ear inside the combine where the kernels get separated from the cob. If you think about how long it takes you to husk that corn, take the husk off, get, the, get all the kernels off by hand, it take you... Oh, we might do two a minute. <laughs> you know, something like that and, yeah. and, and do a good job with it. And, and this combine is probably doing um, something like 120, 30, 40,000 an hour. Wow. How does the machine get the kernels off of the actual cob? It's pretty easy. Once it, see it, it breaks. When it breaks, if it's dry enough, see that stuff pretty falls off pretty easy. Oh, okay. All so right. Once you so it's, it's doing, it up, it's that doing this. Right off. And then. So that's what's going on inside. Then. Right. Just really when you, fast. When you break it, it shells off pretty fast. About half of the grain harvested this season will be sold at a local grain elevator and likely end up as chicken feed. The rest will get ground and mixed into feed for William's 200 head of cattle. Despite this year's terribly disappointing harvest, despite the uncertainty that comes with every growing season, William will be back here planting next spring. What drives him? Knowing his family members who worked this land before him faced some of the same challenges. You get a, a natural love of the land, you know, of, of what you're doing here and, and what the people's done before you. You kind of want to carry that tradition home. 